right, so hello everyone. In today's video, uh, we're gonna go over three reasons not to buy solar. And I'm joined by Zach and Sage, who have a lot of experience in the solar industry, working primarily with power consultants right now and have a couple teams that they're working on within the power ecosystem. But Sage, Zach, three reasons not to buy solar. What's your take? Where, where are we going? Yeah, so I'll start off uh, with the first reason, and this one may seem obvious, but really it just comes down to it's too shady, right? Solar, uh, solar technology really only works when we're getting those, uh, those sunlight rays uh, that feel so good, but sometimes burn us if we're on the beach too long. Um, solar panels, they, they need that sun in order to operate. Uh, so if your house is just covered in trees, um, it's really just probably not gonna be a good fit unless you want to chop them all down so right that uh, makes sense yeah that's so, number one yeah if it's covered not going to get enough sunlight that's not even going to make a difference it, you need sunlight and solar to produce that energy savings yep got it number two is my electric bill is too small so a lot of times people have high electric bills these days it's not always the case I was talking with a guy the other day and he normally is much under 100. So he's closer to 75, sometimes 80. That range is usually just no good for solar, mostly because even though it might be in the future, if their electric goes up, the amount they're gonna invest versus what they're gonna get in return, even if it's credits or anything else, it's just not gonna really make it worthwhile. Uh, normally though, if we get over that, we get closer to 100. It's almost always a no brainer to go in areas that they have good net metering uh, regulation as well as good sun. So really anything in the Midwest and the South as far as sunshine is perfect, uh, but that low energy bill just usually doesn't make it worth it. Right. And you kind of teased there the, I think the last one a little bit. Um, Sage, did you want to go into that, that last one that Zach teased a little bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. He, uh, he alluded to it. Um, so uh, he alluded to the fact that uh, net metering um, is a term where it's basically the agreement with the utilities where you can buy and sell power with the utility company. Uh, so different than your most people's plan if they don't have solar where their energy is going one way and they're just buying that power when you do go solar you enter into an agreement with the utility company where you're actually able to sell excess power back to them and in most areas where people are doing solar that's a one for one credit system where you're able to sell power back at the same rate that they're selling power to you that makes it very easy from a cost perspective uh, to get the value out of that system. There are some areas where maybe you're only getting 20, 30 cents on the dollar when you sell back extra power. Uh, so going solar is not going to be as beneficial um, just from a financial standpoint in those areas. There are some workarounds. Um, a lot of people might actually downsize and just do a slightly smaller system. Um, so instead of being fully electrically offset, they might do a 50 or a 60, 70% system to avoid uh, selling any excess back. So that's one way to avoid it. Um, but in general, that's not as good of an area for solar. Um, and like Zach mentioned, you know, if your power bill is just not using a lot of electricity, it could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe you're the only person in the house um, and or you're not there a lot. You, maybe you travel a lot for work. Um, we do come across those, those situations. Typically, if you are home, you have a family there, um, you're probably gonna be using enough power for solar to make sense, uh, especially if either of you work from home or have any sort of large appliances, hot tub, air conditioning, um, air, uh, electric vehicles, um, but even just regular uh, appliances, computers and stuff, so. If you have an Airbnb, you're gonna fall into the category of using enough electric to, to warrant it. I, I have one and let me tell you, when people no, they don't have to pay the electric bill whenever their mm. cost is fixed, i.e. renting the house for short or long term. That, that electricity bill seems to rise pretty drastically. So if you're an investor, mm. specifically short term rentals, it could be a huge cost offset when you're looking at those $300, $400 electric bills for the hot tub, the AC, and all the lights to be running and all the TVs to be on when the guests are gone. <laughs> 
Not to mention it's a business expense at that point, which is also a benefit. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I think I think I want to end the video on that note. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Sage, for joining the channel. I'll link all their information in the description below. So if you want to reach out and ask them any more questions about solar, they'd be happy to, to answer those questions. I have my ambassador link also, if you just want to go ahead and purchase through them and work with them, you can use the link in the description as well. But I hope you learned something about solar that you didn't know before and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.